On the other hand, as you practice further and you have more wisdom, then sometimes if you really want to tell a lie, and you know that really this is all actually for everyone's benefit, maybe you can tell a lie. If someone actually comes with a gun to your head and say, and he knows he's going to shoot, you know this is an example, right? During the Second World War, if the there was some Jewish uh, people staying in your house, hiding in your house. He ran in and hit your basement. And then the German soldiers came in and said, Look, I'm looking for some Nazis, it's a, for, for some Jewish people. Did, the, did, the, did they come in or not? You know what I'm saying? You know what they're going to do right, when they find the Jewish people? They're going to kill them, right? Then they say, Well, um, this, you know, cannot lie. Well, we can do that. <laughs> Then in that case, I would say, yes, you go ahead and lie. Why? You go ahead and be aware that you are lying. Be aware also that in this case, it's really to save someone's life. And you're willing to, if there were actually negative karma with that, you take it. But you want to save someone's life. Just be aware, but be honest that you are lying. But knowing that this is for a, a, a bigger purpose. Does that help? I don't think in many circumstances, we have a life and death situation. So I think in most circumstances, if you can, tell the truth. But if you want to avoid the answer question, you can say something else and look stupid, but it's okay. <laughs> Alright, but it's still oh, speak the truth. The words that come from your mouth is the truth. Again, you see, Dharma, a way of life. You have a lot of these kind of situations, right? So you go back to first principles. First principle is, I do not want to lead a life where I cause harm to others, to myself, and I want to lead a life when I bring benefits to others and to myself. I give you the four principles that you can answer this question about lying. Right? Second principle is that I will not do any, I will only do good things, good speech, good thoughts. I will avoid bad things, bad speech, bad thoughts. Third thing is, I will try to purify my mind. Right, pull my mind in, purify my mind. So therefore, if, if you practice now, tell a lie. You want to tell a lie? In most circumstances, it's not life threatening. And then you tell yourself, I'm not sure whether my mind is playing tricks on me. Because when I lie, I'm not sure whether it's going to benefit myself or others. As I say, telling a lie to please a lady, okay? And then maybe that's for selfish purposes. You're not sure. Then I'd rather not do it because I may actually be building my ego and then harm others as well. I will stop it. But then when it's a case of life and death, the Nazi soldiers and the Jewish, then I know not to harm others, right? Correct? And bring benefits to others. I weigh the cost and benefits, I know, I know what I'm going to do. I will lie. Because I know my greater intentionality. When you think of it this way, it's just quite clear cut in most circumstances. And you don't need com complex, complex rules. In fact, you may not necessarily need a preset to say, right? But in terms of what you say, what you do, you're very clear. For example, will you kill an animal? Well, in general, no. I will not kill an animal. Why would I kill it? Because it's causing harm, right? Basically. Simple enough, right? Then you will someone ask, can I kill a mosquito? Then there's another question of here. I think we only have five minutes. Any other questions? Unless you want me to answer the mosquito question, but any other questions? Yet another thing that uh, I've sort of tried to do in my own life, I'm not necessarily successful, is that to simplify everything, not to simplify everything, supplement these things that this five one with the three key points that I mentioned. Have an intentionality, do good, not bad, second, and third, purify my mind. The, the addendum that I will add actually is the following, which I don't know whether you want to do that also. In general, it's just, I tell myself, and I, I, I'm very impatient by the way, so when I talk also, sometimes I'm just very impatient. I will just hold myself back and say, just be kind. Okay, just be kind to others. So therefore, when I'm like getting it, it's still 10 minutes, okay. All right. Huh? Uh. So, when I'm getting impatient, and then I realize I'm getting impatient because I can use the first four principles to actually hold myself back. But the very simple one is because whenever I feel that I'm getting heated up or I'm just getting a bit more impatient, I will tell myself, oh, just be kind. 
And then I will calm myself. Then immediately I feel myself cooling off a bit. And I just say, yeah, I need I just just be calm. In fact, for meditation too, it's actually very helpful when you start your meditation. When you start your meditation of quiet time, you can start by just telling myself, oh, I just want to be kind. I just want to feel kindness. Now, this is very powerful because you're not saying I want to be kind to others or you want to be kind to yourself. I just want to feel kindness. And this kindness is actually going to heal yourself. I just want to feel kindness. And when you want to feel kindness, your mind calms down and you're more relaxed. Okay, so the kindness part is also a help. <coughs> Then you I think you're all very bored. Either you're all knowing what I'm saying, or you're totally bored, or what. Are there any other questions?
Sometimes you know what's happening? Go to the fourth, the third principle, purify your mind. You ask, hey, who's the boss here? Oh my goodness, my ego is the boss here. Then you go back. Why do you want it to be so perfect? So that you look good. Then you know who's the boss? Your ego. Then you go back. Right? So I think these same principles apply to the functioning of your subcommittee and your committee as well. I know sometimes when you run events, you want things to run perfectly, but it doesn't matter, your students and people who come here are here for the Dharma, they can accept imperfections. Not that you'll be very careless about it, but the fact that imperfections, but okay, be very mindful about relationships. Be very, very mindful about relationships. Perfection is not that necessary. It is the ties that matter, it's the bonds that matter. It's the bonds that last. Okay. So what if your society at the end of it okay, like this year they had 20 events, oh we get 30 events, oh very good. But everybody is like work to death and then the relationships are really bad. I don't care. <laughs> Frankly, I don't care about that. But you have fewer activities and very everybody is very happy, there's a great bondage amongst the members. And then you may and then you have, you have some meaningful fewer but more meaningful activities that attract people and maybe not many people but people who come are really really very interested I think that's good, well done you don't, have, don't go by number necessarily I'll just give an example okay? so I say people and again I'll use the, first, the, the four principles the last one being be kind and I think that's probably important to know especially as I said when you run events and you have KPI just be kind this is not a school this is not a company. Your KPIs, you decide for yourself. So don't be kind to yourself too. Don't have to be overly harsh. Enjoy yourself during the committee, during the running of the committee for the next year. Enjoy yourself. And then that hopefully let your faith in the Dharma increase. Bought it here, so. <laughs> Five minutes already. So, 